Now, senior business leaders have been calling on the government to provide more detail on how they'll help the poorest people in Britain after the pandemic. The so-called Covid Recovery Commission has warned that current plans may well miss the less well-off who are living in the wealthiest areas of the country. Anna Wallace is from the Post-Covid Recovery Commission and she joins me now. Ms Wallace, good to see you this morning. Um, explain exactly the point that the Commission is making this morning. The idea that some of the most deprived people in the country are, are living cheek by jowl with, with, with some of the best often and, and thus they fall through the cracks. That's absolutely right. The um, COVID Recovery Commission this morning found that across a range of factors, some of the poorest communities in society have been worst affected by the pandemic. But as you rightly said, this is not about North or South. And in fact, those areas of deprivation exist all over the country, including some within the most wealthy local authorities across the country. So the Commission is calling on the government really to take a new approach to levelling up and very much echoing the comments of your previous guests that this can't be about large economic areas and wide regions actually you really need to get down to the local and indeed the neighborhood level if you're going to be able to address some of these issues well who possesses the ability to take such a granular approach well, ultimately, I think it's local leaders. And again, you heard a, you heard a little bit this from, from your guest this morning. Uh, local leaders have the local knowledge to understand what it is that communities need. And that's true whether it comes to things like health, which is clearly the sort of public priority number one at the moment, but also when it comes to reaching disadvantaged communities and helping them retrain or return to work. But actually, a lot of the people that we spoke to and um, all of the England Metro mayors sit on the commission, they accept that with with greater powers and resources to deliver those strategies locally has got to come better accountability. And actually, I think you're starting to see that through some of the local lockdown measures is actually local leaders feel they can get a better handle on some of these things. And our view is that can go for levelling up too. Um, what is your understanding, Ms Wallace, of, of, of levelling up? I mean, has it been up until this stage anything other than rather obtusely flinging money around in, in various different directions and hoping some of it has a positive response? It's a sentiment that we've heard, um, and I think that this is why the Commission really is calling on the government to define levelling up. And by the way, the Commission and everyone that we spoke to agreed with the ambition. They agreed with the principle that we need to level up certain parts of our country, but really still perhaps unclear on what that means. The other thing that we believe is if you are to better measure and define levelling up, then that should include not just economic factors like how productive or how much people earn within a region, but actually things are incredibly important today like health mental health things like life expectancy so that we're thinking about leveling up in more than just economic terms and more than just economic infrastructure but actually social infrastructure too what's happening to community groups <clears throat> sports clubs and others up and down the country who have provided an important uh, extra resilience to people as they've been uh, uh, coming through the crisis uh, anna wallace from the post-covid recovery commission good to see you this morning thanks for being with us